While hundreds of thousands of Nevadans struggle to find work, scammers are getting their hands on millions of dollars from the unemployment system. Those individuals do go down, they go down hard. Only on News 4, meet Nevada's unemployment fraud fighting team. Plus another reason why Mother Nature made it especially hard to fight the massive Colin fire. The long sad process of picking up the pieces in the wake of that Colin fire has begun. We'll bring you here live. News 4 at 6 starts now. And good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Millions of your tax dollars are going to people who are cheating the unemployment insurance system. And the state of Nevada will be the first to tell you it's a problem they're struggling to stay on top of. News 4's investigative reporter Ben Briscoe revealed last month nearly 1 in 10 unemployment insurance payments in Nevada should not have ever gone out. Now he's been invited on an exclusive tour of the Nevada Job Connects Fraud Fighting Division to see what's being done about it. It's an inside look you'll only see on News 4. Behind this door in a location we had to promise to keep secret because they get so many death threats. If you make, make more than 209 this week, you would not call it. Is the front line of Nevada's unemployment fraud fighting team. They have had their hands full the last three years. This has been very hard and very demanding. Kelly Kirsch's group's most recent takedown involved a two-year undercover sting, landing these four Nevadans behind bars after a plea deal earlier this month. Court documents say investigators caught them using the identities of illegal immigrants to rack up almost $4.4 million in overpayments. Well, you're talking about an individual that has intentionally gone out to steal large sums of money. Uh, there is no mercy there. Those individuals do go down, they go down hard. Over the past three years, the Benefit Integrity Unit has identified more than $120 million in overpayments in Nevada like these. That's about 9% of all the money going out. As far as uh, dollar amounts, they've come down dramatically. Overpayments used to sit in the double digits at 14% just a few years ago. The department says the decrease is mostly because of federal funds that help them almost triple their staff. And I'm talking millions of dollars to put together new systems whereby to discover and stop fraud in the instant. Their investigative unit has actually expanded so much they had to remodel the office. Where I'm standing now used to be a wall. Our tools are becoming much more dynamic and we know things today that we did not know three or four years ago. The biggest help is a new database where employers identify people they just hired who might have been receiving unemployment before and shouldn't be anymore. We audit that whole list at this time. Once they find someone getting overpaid by the system, new laws allow them to garnish wages and even tax returns in order to get that money back. Ben Briscoe, News 4. And a new law also makes unemployment fraud a felony in Nevada, but with this new power, the department says they won't prosecute most of the cases. Tonight at 11, Ben will be back to look at that side of the story to find out why someone breaking the law would be given a pass on jail time. Meantime, Nevada's unemployment rate remains steady at 13.4 percent in the month of October. For the third month in a row, there is still around 176,400 Nevadans who are unemployed. In the Reno-Sparks area, joblessness went down by a half a percentage point, falling to 12.1 percent. Carson City's unemployment rate fell to 12 percent. And the Elko area reached its lowest level this year, checking in at 6.7 percent. Tonight, some are asking if the browned out fire station on Skyline Boulevard affected efforts to extinguish the Collin fire. In this afternoon's latest news conference, Reno Fire Chief Michael Hernandez says the answer to that question is no. He says since the fire was fueled by such strong winds, a staff station on Skyline would not have mattered. This fire quickly grew. It was uh, an erratic fire, and whether that station was staffed or not, uh, would not have made an impact of the overall outcome of that fire. Some good news. The chief says the city will be reimbursed up to 75% for its cost to fight the fire. That cost for now is set at about $750,000. Well, the effort put forth by firefighters is not being questioned, but what is being questioned is whether or not this fire will have any effect on the future of fire management in Washoe County. News 4 reached out to all county commissioners. Chairman John Bredernitz was the only one to respond, and much like the answer given by the city, he says changing the way things were handled 
McDonald would not have stopped this fire. I believe that the quick response by the firefighters uh, was the saving of 4,000 houses. We did unfortunately lose some houses, but it could have been much worse. And the county says they utilized all assets to protect the community, including their city alert system. City alert works like a reverse 911 call during the Collin fire. The first alert went out at 4 a.m., but if you do not have a landline, you must actually sign up to receive the call on your cell phone. Just go to readywashoe.com to sign up. New at 6 tonight, a plant expert from the UNR Cooperative Extension says many of the homes that were burned were surrounded by highly flammable juniper plants. Ed Smith says the plants burn hot and tend to be filled with dead brush that also burns. He says residents should be following long-standing advice to junk the junipers and install less fire-friendly plants near their homes. Um, lawn's a great plant material, not right for everybody because it uses a lot of water. Uh, flowers, like perennial plants, annual flowers, those types of things. Um, herbaceous uh, ground covers are great. If you're going to go with shrubs, go with low-growing deciduous shrubs, uh, two feet or under preferred. And Smith says area nurseries can provide even more information about which plants can help protect your home in the case of a fire. More than two dozen families are picking through what's left of their homes tonight in the wake of the Collin fire. Many say the loss of their homes and their belongings is devastating. News 4's Victoria Campbell caught up with one family today still picking through the pieces. She joins us live from what's left of their home on Pioneer Drive tonight with more. Vicki? Well, Shelby, the Mann family had lived here for 18 years, raised their children here, loved the view of the canyon and the mountains beyond. But tonight, there is little left standing here at the home on Pioneer Drive. Still, the Mann family says all that really matters is that all of them survived the Collin fire. I don't know. We seem to adjust just well to it. I, uh, it's okay. It's, it's, it's gone. And it's okay. It's okay. Ray and Ellen Mann say they were stunned. That is, that was the uh, sounding board structure of the piano. To see their beloved home lying in ashes. This is, this is actually a bookshelf. Yeah. They were out of town when they got the call from their daughter early Friday morning that a brush fire was threatening the house. She made it out, and a neighbor later confirmed the worst. It just to, to think that all of a sudden this place that was our home is gone, but it's it is just a home, you know. Clay Lancaster is their son. He grew up in this house and says while the fire has taken many belongings away, there's one thing it can never erase. What my mom and I were saying at dinner is you can replace things. So it's just it, the memories will never, you can't take that away. Still standing in the back of the house is a ski lift pole from Squaw Valley that used to hold up the deck and the two fireplaces and a few scorched belongings. Firefighters helped recover the family safe that held some gold nuggets and a few rare coins. I think I want to kind of keep it as a memento. There's a penny. I don't know what the penny's doing down there. Ellen Mann says she's optimistic about the future and hopes others feel the same way about losses in their own lives. A lot of people feel that they'll never recover from this. We've never been through it before, but we really feel that this is something you can recover from. Today, the Manns met with their insurance company. They say they hope to rebuild their home. They're looking for a place to stay in the meantime, but they say they will celebrate the holidays together. That's all that really matters. Reporting live, I'm Victoria Campbell. Joe? All right, they are amazingly resilient. Thank you, Vicki, for that report. The first detailed view of the life inside the inner circle of the former Penn State football coach accused of sexually assaulting young boys tonight. Jerry Sandusky is being portrayed as a monster. But is that the Jerry Sandusky you knew? Still ahead, a preview of tonight's Rock Center, where we hear from a 24-year-old man who grew up with Sandusky and got to know him very well. Plus, the latest on the blood alcohol results of the hit-and-run driver accused of killing local sportscaster J.K. Metzger. And I'm Chief Meteorologist Brandon Woolley, 45 now in Reno. We are tracking a new storm system to come in for Thanksgiving. We'll take a look at that forecast next. Thanks, Brandon. First, here's our job of the day for this and more listings. Visit our website at